In this video, you're going to learn how to create a two-dimensional array in MATLAB. So we're again going to consider the depth at breast height and trees per acre data. Uh, but instead of making a one-dimensional array for each set of data, we're going to make a two-dimensional array that contains both sets of data. However, before we enter that data, we're going to do a slightly simpler example. So we're going to create a two-dimensional array that has three rows and two columns. The top row is 1, 2, the middle row is 3, negative 4, and the bottom row is 5, negative 6. And we're going to call this array M, capital M. So I'm going to type in capital M. So again, we're going to start the beginning of the array with a square bracket, and a left square bracket. So we'll type in the values for the top row, which are 1 and 2. They're separated by a space. Now to tell MATLAB that we want to start a new row, we're going to use a semicolon. So after the first two values in the top row, we'll put a semicolon. For the middle row, the second row down, we'll enter in the data 3, negative 4. And then again, I'll put a semicolon to indicate that we want to go to the next row. And then I'll put in the last two pieces, uh, negative 5, negative 6. Those are the last two entries in the bottom row. And then I'll close with a right square bracket. Now, if I press Enter, we see what we have is a 3 by 2 matrix. So three rows and two columns. Now, notice if I click on the matrix in the workspace, it opens up the variable editor and in the spreadsheet I see that I have three rows and two columns and just as with the one dimensional array I can click on any particular value and edit the value uh, within the array. So I'm going to come back over here to the command window. Now it turns out that having a semicolon to indicate the next row is not the only way. We can also use a return or an, an enter to uh, indicate that we want to go down to the next row. So I'll start off in the same way. So uh, let me call this one little m. So little m, we'll start off in the same way. We'll list the first, we'll list the two values in the top row and then instead of a semicolon press enter and it'll take us down to the next row. We'll put in a 3 and a negative 4 for the second row and then negative 5 and 6 for the third row and then we will close with a right square bracket and press enter and we see we have the exact same matrix. Notice over here in the workspace that M and little m are treated uh, separately because MATLAB is case sensitive. So a little m is a different variable from capital M. So notice that when we pressed enter, before we had put in the right square bracket, it took us down to the next line. So MATLAB knows the difference of when you are pressing enter to go to a new line to enter in more data, and when you are pressing enter to run the command. So the first time we pressed enter, we were still inside the square brackets. We hadn't put the right square bracket on yet. And so MATLAB knew that we still had more to go. We had more data to enter. But when we pressed enter, the, uh, I guess, with the second time we were still in the square brackets, but the third time we pressed enter, uh, we had put the right square bracket on there and it knew that, okay, we're done and now it's going to run the command. All right, so MATLAB can not handle two-dimensional arrays where one row is a different length from another row or one column is a different length from another column. So if, for example, we scroll back to the very first command we typed in, the capital M, and I try and add another value to the third row, let's say negative 7. So now this would be 
two columns in the top row, two columns in the second row, and three columns in the third row. So if we attempt to do that and we press enter, MATLAB gives us an error. And notice the error says the dimensions are not consistent. So we're not having consistent dimensions between the rows. All right, so now that we've done this simpler example, let's go back to considering the tree data. So I still have the PDF up over here, and we can see our data. All right, so to save time in entering the data, I am going to copy and paste. And since I want to create a two-dimensional array that contains both sets of data, I'm going to copy both sets of data at the same time. All right, so I'm going to select my text tool, and I'm going to highlight the data. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, oh, look, we're highlighting this trees per acre over here, and we don't want that. That's OK. We'll take care of that in just a moment. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to call the tree data tree data. I know, very creative. All right, so I'm going to say equal, open left bracket. And now I'm going to paste the data in. So if I paste, OK, so let's see. So notice there's this trees per acre over here. We don't want that, so we're going to delete that. So all of the data for the depth of breast height is on the first line, and then it goes down to the second line. And here is all of the data for the trees per acre. OK, so I need to put my right square bracket and then press Enter. And here is all of the data. So it's showing me the first nine columns of data and then the tenth column uh, down below. Likewise, I can click on the tree data over in the workspace and I can see all the values in the variable editor. All right, so to recap, you now know how to enter two-dimensional arrays into MATLAB.